Hey folks, it's that time of year again. Application season, right? Tag season, whatever you want to call it. And today we're going to talk about New Mexico, the land of enchantment. The land of great hunting opportunity if you're lucky enough to draw a tag. Right here in front of my computer, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be reading off to you is uh, from GoHunt.com. And that's who makes these videos possible. So if you want way more detail than this, go sign up at Go Hunt. Sign up for the Insider. Use promo code Randy and they'll give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. So the, the strategy articles they put out about New Mexico are way more in depth than what I'm going to talk about here. The whole idea of these videos is to give you the overview, the highlights. Make sure you don't miss any deadlines. Make sure you don't make any big mistakes. And then do your application, cross your fingers, and hope that you get a tag. And I can tell you, having hunted New Mexico quite a few times and helped on more hunts than what I've drawn myself, New Mexico is worth it. It's always high up my list. And we always talk about short-term, mid-term, long-term plans. New Mexico, there's very few hunts that are going to be short-term for any species. There's a few that might be mid-term, and by mid-term, I'm talking five to nine years. Most of them, when you look at the draw odds, New Mexico is a long-term plan. Ten or more years of trying to get the tag. But every year, somebody applies first year, like last year, our sweepstakes winner. He'd never applied in New Mexico. I apply him for a tag I've been trying to get for 20 years. Poof! Very first time he applies, he draws his first choice. So, because there's no point system in New Mexico, you never know. So, the deadline, right? We always say don't miss deadlines. And in New Mexico, the deadline this year is March 17th. It's 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So don't think, oh, after I get home from work on the 17th, I'll take care of it. You're going to be out of luck if you wait that long. So put that on your calendar and don't forget about it. Let's talk about how the New Mexico system works. It's, it's a system that, as far as how the draw works, I'm a big fan of. How the allocation works among residents and non-residents, eh, not that great. But the point system in New Mexico is zero. There's no point system. New Mexico and Idaho are the two states that don't have a point system. Woohoo! So that makes it really easy. You can come in and out of New Mexico with no penalty. You might say, oh, it works for my budget this year, but not next year, or whatever. When you apply in New Mexico, there's a couple things you got to be planning on. You know how in one of our previous videos we talked about budgets and short-term, mid-term, long-term plan, how to get the most value out of, out of your investment? Well, New Mexico requires a $65 upfront license, and then there's $9 of stamps you got to buy if you're successful. So your upfront cost that's sunk is the $65. And if you draw, don't forget the other Two, there's two stamps. One's five dollars. One's four dollars. Don't forget those. Hopefully, you have to buy that nine dollar stamp uh, set of stamps because that means you drew a tag. But the the other part of New Mexico, and uh, I'm just pulling up their booklet here. I always go check their regulations. Usually, in the application booklet, it says new for this year. So you have to front all of the costs also. So if you're dealing with a limited budget. New Mexico takes 65 of that just to apply with your non-resident license. And then for every species, it's going to grab a whole bunch of your money. And when I look at this, they're, they're going to sit on it until late April. The last week of April is when the results come out. And then the refunds don't get posted for another week or two. But here's how much you have to front for each species. For the high quality elk hunts, They'll say QHD or QHD. What that means is quality or high demand. You're going to front an additional $773. Now, if you apply for what's called an S license, which I think it just means standard is what the S stands for, then you only have to front $548. The high demand deer tags, you're fronting $368. The S deer tags, you're fronting $283. Antelope, you're fronting another $283. 
And then they have these exotics of uh, uh, Oryx, Barbary sheep, or Outad, some call them, and Ibex. Uh, the Oryx and Ibex, you're going to front $1,623. And the uh, Barbary sheep, $373. And here's the killer. Bighorn sheep, whether it's Rocky Mountain Bighorn or Desert Bighorn, you're fronting $3,173. Oh man, there goes your budget. So we're not even going to talk about sheep here because since they changed how they do it, I think there's only a couple desert sheep and a couple rocky tags that are even possible for a non-resident to draw because of the, the non-resident allocation, which is what I'm going to talk about now. The non-resident allocation is not very generous for the self-guided non-resident. So, 84% of these tags go to residents, which I think every state should give their residents priority. So here's where the rub for me comes with the other 16%. Of that next remaining part of the pie, 10% goes to people who have booked the services of an outfitter. You can be a resident or a non-resident, and you go in that pool for the outfitter set-aside tags or whatever term you want to put to it. The people who uh, contracted with an outfitter. So you got 84% there, 10% there. That leaves 6%. So 6% of the tags go to the self-guided non-resident. That's lower than just about every other Western state except Oregon. So the fact that you got to buy a non-refundable license and front all these costs for these really low draw odds mm, may not be in your plans. So uh, one of the things when it comes to that, when you, so let's talk about what this 6% represents. They, they have a rounding system because some people say, well, what if there's only five tags for that hunt coat? And if there's five tags for that hunt coat, don't, don't apply. You're not drawn. What if there are 10 tags? Don't apply. As a self-guided non-resident, you can't draw a tag because they're rounding. I think when I've talked to them, it's anything, if the, you take the total number of tags and you multiply it by 6%, and if it's over 0.75, over three quarter, they will round up and possibly give one tag to a self-guided non-resident. So you do the math of that, that means there has to be at least 13 tags in a hunt code in order for there to be one tag available for us non-residents who are self-guided. So look at how many tags they're issuing and don't apply for any that have less than 13 tags. Yeah, sucks, really sucks. And that means if there's 25 tags, 25 times 0 0.06 is 1.5, they're gonna round that down to one. Uh, every year people put choices down where statistically by a function of the number you, you've just wasted a choice because there's not a tag available. So now that we've covered all that let's talk about how the system works as far as choices. New Mexico gives you three choices. Don't worry about fourth and fifth. Ignore those. One, they're never going to be any for non-residents and two, if they are they're the type of hunts you probably don't want to incur that cost to go and do. So, you get to use three choices. And they look at your three choices before they go on to the next person. So, use some strategy to that. If you are one of those lucky people where this year you get the low random number, you might want to use your first choice as one of those just shoot for the stars kind of choices. You know, for elk, okay, you're going to apply in the Gila, right? The, every, the, the, if I throw out a unit number, it's no secret. All you got to do is look at the draw odds out on Go Hunt, and you'll see that this is a high demand hunt. Unit 16D, super, super hard to draw. Well, maybe that or some similar hunt you put as your first choice because you never know. But then your second choice, make it something a little more reasonable. And if you're like me, make your third choice something that's I, I just sort it by draw odds and say, what's the easiest elk tag to draw? That's always my third choice. 
sometimes I get it, sometimes I, most times I don't. So then some people ask, well, then how do you calculate draw odds? New Mexico, any state that gives you multiple choices, New Mexico gives you three choices, Nevada gives you five, Arizona gives you two. Those are really hard to replicate what are the draw odds because you need to know how many people applied for every tag at every choice level. So Go Hunt runs this draw tens of thousands of times. Because as you know, if you only ran it once, you're going to have these anomalies. So they run it tens of thousands of times to get it to where, okay, this is the grade. This, this is probably as close as you can estimate of what your draw odds were for last year. So if you want those most accurate draw odds, go to Go Hunt. Here's, here's another thing that I think a lot of people overlook in New Mexico. And it's, it's, it's stuff that... I'm super, uh, I'm a big fan of. <clears throat> New Mexico takes some of their best hunts, whether it's elk or deer, and they make them youth hunts and mobility impaired hunts. I've done both of them. I took my nephew Cody to New Mexico. He drew one of the youth elk tags. He shot a bull elk. It was his graduation present. He was 17 years old goes down there and we had a great hunt. I've taken a disabled vet, uh, my buddy Bernie Kuntz, who's no longer with us, I took him down there on an antelope hunt and he shot a really nice buck. So if you have a youth hunter in your household or if somewhere in your hunting network you have a mobility impaired hunter, New Mexico is a place you should be looking. Uh, the rule or the, the theory that New Mexico uses is they want to get the most opportunity that they possibly can without a negative impact on the age class of the animals. That's why New Mexico has a very high demand from non-residents as their age classes are really good. And the way they do that is with very short seasons and multiple weapon types. There are some units in New Mexico that never get rifle hunted for elk. They're only archery hunted or muzzleloader hunted. Um, so some of the other units will only have one rifle season. And that's how they can do this. They, the, the elk seasons, the, at least in the firearms, whether it's muzzleloader or rifle, are usually only five days. You gotta have your act together. If you get some bum weather, you get something else goes wrong in a five day hunt, things just, tilted really heavily against you and that's just the way they can get more people in the field without negatively impacting the resource. The way that New Mexico does this creates kind of that, I, I'll call it a, a double-edged sword. They can put more people out in the field but once you get the tag you better be on your game. You better be planning, you better be scouting because you only got five days. And the deer hunts are slightly different. The antelope hunts are slightly different. The antelope hunts often are even shorter. So be, don't, don't be messing around if you have a New Mexico tag. Get down there a couple days early, be scouting, and make the most of that hunt because these short seasons put a lot of pressure on that. So the last part I'm going to talk about is the most controversial part of New Mexico is they are probably known as the king of the landowner tag program. Now, the landowner tags come in two forms, ranch only, which means you can only hunt the deeded ranch of, of that ranch that got the, the tag, it's called RO. And then there's unit wide tags. The unit wide tags, you can hunt the entire unit, all the public land or any private land that you get access to. And any of the ranches that enroll in the UW, Unit Wide Program, those ranches are open to public hunting. So uh, I know it carries its controversy, but it's an option that's there in New Mexico. So that's kind of a summary of New Mexico. I love it because it's a lot easier. It's, it's not complicated with point systems and all this and that. They give you three choices, make the most of them. If you want to see the best draw odds, the best strategy articles, all the stuff we talk about, go out to Go Hunt. They're the ones who ask us to, to, to do these videos. They're like, 
give people the overview, at least get them started. So uh, if you want to sign up for the Insider, go out there, use promo code Randy, uh, and they'll give you a $50 gift card. But mostly, do not miss the deadline. New Mexico, there's no mulligans here. You're either in or you're out. So deadline is March 17th, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, and you'll get your draw results sometime that, usually that last week of April. And if you draw, you will be dancing in the streets. I'm not going to dance. My wife says I'm no good at dancing. She saw me doing it on a video the other day. She just rolled her eyes like, would you quit that? So just go find a dark street and dance around if you, if you draw. Because I, I've, I've yet to draw a tag or be on a hunt in New Mexico where I've been helping someone else where it wasn't a fantastic experience. I, I think New Mexico deserves a lot of credit for how they're balancing opportunity and quality. So there you have it folks, New Mexico. March 17, apply and good luck.